Hello everyone, this is Mr. Healy. Today we're going to start the Americas unit, and for day one of that unit we'll be discussing the Olmec and Maya civilizations. So a little bit of review back to September. Um, you probably remember when we discussed Beringia, uh, the, mic the land bridge that existed uh, roughly 12,000 years ago. Um, that connected uh, present-day Russia and Alaska. So most scientists believe that's where the first uh, Americans came uh, through that land bridge that is today the Bering Strait. However, there is some archaeological evidence to suggest that humans actually came uh, much earlier, but um, that's something that's still being analyzed. Either way, uh, the Bering Strait, or what was at the time Beringia, played a key role in the settlement of the uh, the, er the early Americans, the first inhabitants of the Americas. So here we see the Bering Strait, a uh, small waterway that separates Siberia from Alaska today, but at the time all of this uh, green uh, was most likely land. And then we see the arrows on uh, this map showing a uh, the likely pattern of settlement of these early settlers traveling southeast from present-day Russia. Uh, Siberia is part of Russia, for those who are not aware, uh, traveling there through Alaska down through Western Canada and into the present day United States and eventually Central and South America. So these earliest settlers were of course hunters and gatherers, um, following herds, uh, using those herds for food and clothing and their basic survival needs. Uh, eventually you have thousands of different tribes just in North America alone not including the civilizations that develop in Central and South America. And these tribes very much, uh, their lifestyle was very dependent on their geography. This is called ge geographic determinism. Basically the climate, the vegetation um, of, where, of where you live determines the lifestyle that you follow. So hunters and gatherers, uh, fishermen, and eventually settling down into agriculture, depending on the climate. So we see a wide variety of cultures and civilizations uh, dependent even more so than um, in many other regions we've talked about, dependent on their geography. So we see evidence of farming in the Americas at, uh, at least as far back as 7,000 years ago uh, when uh, settlers in present-day Mexico started cultivating maize and then this it was discovered that maize could also be grown very effectively in what is today the southern united states so we see these tribes start to settle down into more sedentary agricultural lifestyles with uh, larger civilizations than would be possible in a hunting and gathering society and eventually also the cultivation not just of maize but also beans pumpkins peppers and squash among other crops. Uh, one point we should make before we go on, you'll often in reading about these early cultures here reference to Mesoamerican culture. This refers to Middle America or what we call today Central America. Uh, and it's actually here that we see the first major true civilizations of the Americas as opposed to smaller tribes or clans. Um, so we'll see already in 1500 uh, BCE, uh, the first advanced cultures of the Americas uh, spread out throughout Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, and Belize. And again, maize being the backbone of their diet. Um, and here we see Mesoamerica on the map, as I said today correlates with most of Central America today. So the first 
uh, truly uh, true civilization of uh, the Americas that we should take note of is the Olmec, founded roughly 1500 BC. Um, it disappeared about 400 BC, so 1100 years that this civilization uh, survived. They were centered in uh, in and around the Gulf of Mexico, in present day Mexico, of course, uh, in a very tropical climate. As you can see, over 100 inches of rainfall a year, um, but also this allows for very fertile soil and easy transportation with the many rivers in that region. And so they're not only able to grow large amounts of food to eat and trade, but also other resources prevalent in the area, such as salt, remember important preservative, uh, tar, clay, wood, and stone, all things that they can use to expand their own civilization and or to trade with their neighbors. There we see the heart of the original uh, Olmec civilization, and of course spread out a bit from there. So quite a few cultural uh, achievements for the Olmec. And in some ways they can be seen as kind of a mother culture for a lot of later cultures of Central America. We'll see especially uh, the impact they had on the Mayans. Uh, so as you, they built uh, pyramids, they were able to build columns, uh, massive stone heads, so pretty advanced architecturally and in regard to sculpture. Um, very religious people developed a system of writing, calendars, uh, which also tied in with their religion um, and what gods should be worshipped at a given point in the calendar. Um, their religion was centered around nature, but especially around the jaguar, um, and also a ritual ball game that most likely had religious significance that was played by the aristocrats. Both this ball game and the emphasis on the jaguar god, as well as their pyramid building, all of these things are uh, aspects later of Mayan culture that seem to be, to some degree, at least rooted in earlier Olmec civilization. Examples of stone heads produced by the Olmec uh, and st uh, that have survived to the present day. Examples of their art. Another example of one of their key settlements, uh, what was later referred to it, uh, by the Spanish as San Lorenzo. So we don't know exactly what happened around 400 BC when the Olmec declined, whether it was due to the result of warfare being attacked and conquered by outside tribes or falling into civil war and destroying themselves after the death of one of their kings, or perhaps a combination of both. But for whatever reason, they decline and uh, cease to be exist as a distinct civilization around about 400 BCE. So the other major civilization we're going to discuss today, the Mayans. Uh, the height of Mayan civilization, roughly between 250, 250 and 900 CE. So good 600, 650 years after the Olmec. They settle in the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, again, in uh, present day Mexico, think about like where Cancun, Playa del Carmen, that region, a lot of resorts today. That's that's really the heart of the old uh, Mayan empire. So very tropical climate uh, in the north. And then as they expanded their territory also into the highlands in the southern part of this region. So eventually their empire stretched from southern Mexico to the northern nations of Central America today. So highlighted on, in orange on the map here, we see uh, the Mayan Empire during this uh, height of its civilization, covering parts of Mexico, 
Guatemala and Belize. And here, another map of um, Central America at the height of the Mayan Empire. You see the Mayans in green here, and then some of their neighbors as well. So I alluded to before the heavy influence that the Olmec culture had on the Mayans as far as pyramid building, worship of especially worship of the jaguar god as well as the ritual ball game that they played and we do have some very impressive ruins uh, left behind by mayan civilization still visited by millions every year uh, cities like chichen itza tikal tulum uh, all along the yucatan peninsula there so uh, the mayans had numerous different city states that were basically self-sufficient and independent of each other. Sometimes they might be allied with each other. Oftentimes they were at war with each other. And each city state had its own king who oftentimes also claimed to be a god. Um, so as, he, as I said, self-sufficient, each city state grew their own food, had their own uh, gods they emphasized and had uh, their own sort of uh, products that were the center of their trade that they could trade with other city-states or other civilizations. So sometimes they'd ally it together against a common enemy or for trade. Other times they'd be at each other's throats uh, trying to conquer each other. But they were also great builders, imitating some of the, the early st uh, earlier styles of Olmec and other civilizations, but also going well beyond and leaving some of the greatest um, cultural remnants behind of any of the civilizations of the ancient Americas. So Mayan economy, some of the things that they had of value they could trade uh, to other civilizations with salt, flint, often used in knives and weapons, feathers used for ceremonial religious purposes, shells, honey, cotton, and jade, also valuable items. Never, they never developed a uniform currency and oftentimes, in fact, used cacao beans uh, as a form of currency since they didn't really use coins or paper currency. But beyond all those items they traded, they were also a center of agriculture uh, for Central America, producing maize, uh, beans, and squash especially. So very active trade throughout the city-states and throughout the region. And then uh, their primary agricultural method was slash and burn farming, which involved uh, clearing the land in a certain area, burning the plants to create very fertile soil, at least for three to five years. So you could get very high crop yields, but then you'd have to move on to a new plot uh, for slash and burn. And it might take 15 or 20 years for the original plot to uh, recover the nutrients in its soil. It's required a lot of land and constantly finding new and clearing new plots of land for this style of farming. So a little bit about the Mayan social structure. Of course, you have a lot of farmers uh, who could accumulate a decent amount of wealth due to the very fertile soil, the sheer amount they were able to produce. But of course, at the top of the heap, you have the king who often, as I said, was seen as a god um, and could pass on uh, his kingship hereditarily to his son. Then underneath that king, you had a, a, an aristocratic class of priests and warriors beneath them, the merchants and artisans. And like most civilizations at this time period, the vast majority of the citizens were peasants, peasant farmers but more like subsistence farmers. Not, not all of them became sex, successfully wealthy through farming, of course. The religion, uh, very, very polytheistic, numerous gods for all sorts of things. God of war, of death, of rain, of corn. Like the Greeks or the Romans or many other people we talked about uh, in polytheistic religions, these gods weren't necessarily uh, 
considered to be good gods. Uh, they could have good or evil qualities. Um, they could be a mix of both, or, or, or some were seen as entirely good or entirely evil. So they're uh, gods all across the spectrum. They had hundreds of different gods, perhaps even thousands. Um, in fact, each day on the calendar had its own god. That was part of the reason why the calendars were so important to the Mayans. Uh, they thought more accurate calendars, understanding um, the, the, the heavenly spheres, basically, uh, understanding the solar system would help them to figure out how to please the gods and please the gods of each given day. So they, they very much believed in an afterlife, often made offerings to those various gods, uh, such as food or flowers. But it was believed that for many of these gods, what would most appease them was human sacrifice. Uh, so we talked about a lot of warfare between civilizations. And one of the reasons for that was uh, to gain prisoners of war that you could offer as a sacrifice to the gods. Um, you could do a whole ceremonial execution, a beheading, um, or having their uh, heart cut out, or you could execute them into a sinkhole. But the point is, human sacrifice very prevalent because they believed it would appease their gods. Um, and then, as I mentioned, also built a lot of temples and pyramids. They did have a holy book as well. They had a system of writing and were able to write down their teachings, a hieroglyphic form of writing. This holy book was called the, the Popol Vuh, and it tells the story all the way back uh, to the their, their basically their creation myth and their teachings about their gods and uh, kind of the basis of their religion. So we see on the top picture, prison of war being led off to either be executed or enslaved. Um, and then bottom picture, a sinkhole, which is another location where prisoners of war might be executed or offered as a sacrifice. Yeah, we see a surviving Mayan temple, very steep steps. So execution of prisoners, ritual execution might be done at the top of those steps by a priest. And then they would just discard the uh, corpse, toss them down, toss them down the steep stairs where someone would gather them and discard the bodies outside of the city. So they were skilled farmers, skilled artisans, skilled in warfare, and as I mentioned, also very skilled in astronomy, uh, very much, in, very intent on understanding the sun, the moon, the planets, uh, and making accurate calendars. The two, two separate calendars, 365-day solar calendar, and then a 260-day religious calendar, and developed a, a hieroglyphic form of writing with over 800 characters. <laughs> We haven't. We still, to the to this day, year 2020, have not fully deciphered um, all what all of these different glyphs mean. So we can't understand all the writings yet, but have at least um, scientists, linguists, been able to translate enough, understand enough to get a pretty good sense of their culture and of their writings. And they would primarily record those writings on a codex, which was bark paper. Uh, much of which did not survive to the present day. Um, but we do have some codexes that have been preserved and translated. As far as their, math, their mathematics, they used a base 20 system with a zero concept. So you don't need to understand a ton about base 20. Um, uh, basically, if you think about like uh, that we use the decimal system based on the number 10 and fractions uh, also based on uh, the number 10, hence the Latin decimal 10. Well, base 20 system, instead of basing the whole numeric system around 10, bases around a, uh, to, uh, the number 20 and fractions related to the number 20. And it was thought that the ritual ball game helped support the natural rhythms um, natural cycles and the progression of the calendar. So 
So here we see an example of their numeric system, how they represented different numbers from 0 to 24. Another example of probably the most visited Mayan site in the present day at Chichen Itza in uh, Mexico. Massive temple complexes that have survived to the present uh, day. Tikal, another very famous site, uh, numerous uh, um, pyramids that survived to the present day. Mayan Observatory, of course, have used for astronomy and to create accurate calendars for religious purposes. Here an example of a Mayan calendar, uh, which of course the scholars, uh, the religious scholars would be trained to read and understand all of those symbols and accurately um, express their meanings to the rulers. Here's an example of a Mayan glyph up close, pretty complex. The Mayan Codex with numerous different glyphs. And just more examples of pyramids, calendars. So around about 800 or sometime in the 800s CE, the Mayans start to abandon their cities. Um, similar to the Olmec centuries before them, we're not exactly sure what happened to cause the Mayans uh, decline. There are many different theories. One is that their rivals to the north, the Toltecs, moved onto their land. They had to flee. Others think they basically uh, destroyed many of their own city-states through fight, in interfighting between the city-states, uh, which also would, of course, disrupt trade, undermine them economically, cause the destruction of farmland. Um, others think basically their uh, population growth outpaced their food production, and they perhaps started to starve or, or were wiped out by disease, or likely it could have been a combination of many or all of these different factors. But for whatever reason, the Mayans uh, the Mayan Empire declines and ceases to be an empire sometime during the 800s. The Mayan ball game, if you want to see it portrayed by Disney, click on the link. You can see a short video clip, sanitized version of that Mayan ball game and some of their surviving ball courts. And if you're really interested in going in depth on the Mayans, you can watch Maya, the Blood of Kings documentary uh, over an hour long, about an hour and a half, I believe, that really goes in depth about their culture, their tradition, their great cities, etc. Well, thank you for listening. And next class, you'll be learning about the Aztecs and the Inca.